you go before the Lord. Father God, we come to you on this Palm Sunday thanking you, Lord, for returning to us, Father God. Thank you for being the God that you are, Lord. Yes. Father God, I thank you that you're God and I'm not God, Lord. <laughs> Father God, I thank you that you're God and nobody else is God, Lord, because you're long-suffering, Father God. You're gentle, Father God. You have loving kindness, Father God. You're merciful. So I thank you for being who you are, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we cancel the plans of the enemy to steal from the people of God, Lord. Father God, we decree focus and concentration as we lay the foundation that will prepare them to change, Lord. In the name of Jesus, any spirit designed to disrupt this service, we cast you out in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father God, strengthen your people, Lord. Father God, strengthen your people, Lord. We love you this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. You can have your seats. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap of praise. As you have your seats, amen. Amen, amen. Y'all, we're going to, as always, we want to ask that you please do as little walking as possible as we um, go before the Lord. Um, and as we prepare for our uh, for our sermon today, before we get into it, I have just a, a few announcements that, uh, that, that, that were left out. Um... Uh, today is Palm Sunday. And what that means is, back in the olden days, people cut branches from palm trees and they laid them across the paths and they waved them in the air to celebrate the triumphant return of Jesus into Jerusalem. And Palm Sunday also represents the victory of the spirit over the flesh. So you know the scripture when it says, the flesh wars against the spirit and the yeah. spirit against the flesh. This is symbolic that we have victory in the spirit over our flesh. So this is the importance and the significance of Palm Sunday. I also want to uh, remind you guys that next week is Resurrection Sunday. So we're going to ask that you prepare your hearts to give a special resurrection seed. Whatever the Lord has placed on your heart. We want to ask that you give a special resurrection seed. We also have our church meeting next Monday, I'm sorry, next Sunday at 9.30 a.m. in the morning before resurrection service. So there will not be any light class, but we'll have our church meeting at 9.30 a.m. And immediately after service today, we're going to ask that everybody assist in the setup as we have our board meeting today after service. And y'all keep, uh, keep people in prayer. Um, uh, Y'all give a hand clap of praise for Minister Jamal and, and Sister Tierra. They had their child over the weekend. So the baby's, amen. the baby's name is Chloe Venice Johnson. That's what the baby's name is. So they're out. Uh, Brother Corey, he is in Los Angeles with his family visiting his mother for Palm Sunday. And Prophetess Rogers uh, is here. So we have a few people that are out today. And y'all, please keep people in your prayers. Amen? Amen. All right, let's get right into the word today. Turn with me to Luke, the sixth chapter. And we're going to begin at verse 46. Luke, the sixth chapter. And we're going to begin at verse 46. And I won't be before you long today, but I really want you to get into this message today. Luke, the sixth chapter, beginning at verse 46. When you have a say amen one more time. Amen. 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 Come on, I need at least three amen. Amen. You know, two's company, three is the crowd. So I need the crowd. I say that every time, all right? So read with me. But why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do the things which I say? Whoever comes to me and hears my sayings and does them, I will show you whom he is like. He is like a man building a house who dug deep. Somebody say dug deep. Dug deep. And laid the foundation on the rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently against the house and could not shake it. For it was founded on the rock. But he who heard and did nothing... It's like a man who built a house on earth without a foundation against which the stream beat vehemently and immediately and fell and the ruin of the house was great. Y'all, I want to talk to you from the subject today of rolling in the deep. 
rolling in the deep. First of all, by a show of hands, how many of y'all ever heard the song by Adele, Rolling in the Deep? Just by just by a show of hands. Who all heard that? Or looking like, what is that? A lot of brothers might not know it. But it's a song by Adele. Um, we could have had it all rolling in the deep. <laughs> That's the song by Adele. Rolling in the deep. Now watch this. The meaning of rolling in the deep is a description of one who is experiencing the absolute depths of pure passionate, unconditional, and ethereal love. Now that love, now that word ethereal means heavenly. A love that takes you to new places of understanding about the human soul and the beauty of perfectly loving you someone. Let me say this. Some of us in the body of Christ have still yet to experience what it truly means to roll in the deep with God. Some of us have yet to experience what it means to truly roll in the deep with God. What it means to experience unconditional love for the Father and what it means to experience the depth of God. Y'all, there, there are depths in God. There are high heights. There are deeper depths. So when I'm talking about rolling in the deep with God, with the same illustration of the song, I'm talking about pure, passionate, unconditional Love and experience and adoration for the king. Amen? Watch this. I know you heard this a bunch of times, but do you really know what the word experience means? I want you to think about it for a second. I want you to think about some experiences in your lives and how it has shaped you. So I want you to think about the word experience and what the word experience really means. Watch this. I need you to follow me. To experience something means that you gain knowledge or practical wisdom from what you have seen, encountered, or undergone. I'm going to say that again. Follow me. Follow me here, y'all. Don't get distracted. Granny coming on in to hear this good old word. Now watch this. When you experience something, write these, write these three words down. When you experience something, that means you gain knowledge or practical wisdom. Watch, write these three words down. From what you've seen, from what you've encountered, or what you've undergone. Remember those three words. Seen, encountered, or undergone. So if you want to experience the depth of who God is, that means you have to see him, which means you have to get in his word. You have to have an encounter with him, which means you have to meet with him and come together. And through that seeing and encountering with God, you have to undergo spiritual transformation, which means that you have to hear what you've seen and encountered without resistance. Mm -hmm. Y'all, when God gave me that definition, y'all, it sums up why many people in the body of Christ are not operating to the highest levels of their Christianity because they haven't yielded to the experience of God. You all, we've yielded to church. We've experienced church. We've experienced the usher board. We've experienced the praise team. We've experienced the charismatic pastors. We've experienced people that are nice and pleasant. But when you experience God, you all, mm, yes. it shapes you and it transforms actions. So let me give you that, let me give you that definition again. To experience something means you gain knowledge or practical wisdom from what you have seen, encountered, or undergone. If you want to experience the depth of who God is, that means, number one, you have to see him, which means you have to get in his word. You have to have an encounter with him, which means you have to meet with him and come together. And through that seeing and encountering with God, undergo spiritual transformation, which means to bear what you've seen and encountered without resistance. Too many people are resisting God. Too many people are resisting what he's trying to show you. Too many people are resisting the encounter that they have with him. So they'll come to church and they'll sit in the pew, but they'll be in a state of you can't get nothing in because they're resisting God. Thus, hindering you 
from truly experiencing God. Because when you experience something, it changes you. When I, when I experience love for the first time, it changed me. I, I'm reminded of the movie, and this is not on the notes. I'm reminded of coming to America, right? Oh, Prince Hakeem wanted was somebody to really love him. Listen, he didn't want a robot. Ooh, ooh, he didn't want none of that. I want a woman to really love me. And when he met Lisa McDowell, <laughs> And he got to know her. Watch this. And he experienced love. What was he doing, y'all? Someone to him. <laughs> Someone to be his. Y'all walking down the street, fully professing his love for this woman. Because you know what? He had an experience. He experienced the depths of her love. And I'm telling you, people don't be having their... Someone, they don't have those moments with God because they come in church and let the devil rob them of their experience. Jesus, This is why you got to roll in the deep with God, in the depths of his love, in the depth of who God really is. When you get to understand something, my God, listen, I, I shared with the earlier class this morning, Minister Jamal had his baby and he got to see the whole thing. And when my wife Gave birth to Taylor. I only got this. I was. It was a C-section, so I just held the hand. I didn't see nothing. And I and I said this this morning, so I'm gonna say it again for you all hear that. When I came in that room, y'all, Jamal looked like Moses. <laughs> and I don't know how Moses looked, but listen, y'all, his, his eyes were wide. The little hair he had was rolled back, <laughs> white all on his mouth. <laughs> what y'all been doing in this room? <laughs> and I said, and the first thing I said was, she had natural birth? He said, yeah. The next thing I said was, I said, you saw it all? He said, I saw it all. <laughs> listen, y'all. Listen, y'all. The whole time his head was like, <laughs> he holding his baby. He looking at his wife and his head is like, Y'all, he had an experience. Yes. There are times when you can get in that word mm. and God begin to lay some things on you Jesus. and uncover wisdom yes. and revelation. Yes. And you come up out that room like, oh, look like somebody electrocuted you. <laughs> oh, my God. Y'all, listen. That's what the enemy want to rob you from. Yes. He want to keep us in the everyday church routine Jesus. to rob us Jesus. of the yes. death. Yes. And watch this. Look what the scripture says. Look what the scripture says. He's like a man building a house who dug deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the float arose, the stream beat vehemently against the house and could not shake it, for it was founded on the rock. That's why God requires you to go deep in him, y'all, because there's some storms coming. There's some stuff designed to shake you right out of your faith. And if you're not deep enough, you're not going to make it, but we're going to get to it. Yes, yes. So watch this. When you have an experience with God, and when you have an experience with anything profound, it propels you further. Look at your neighbor and tell them we're rolling in the deep today. Rolling in the deep today. Y'all, let me tell you about the first time I played with fire. The stove was on. And I remember it like it was yesterday. I don't remember my age, but I remember the stove was on. And they was getting ready to put a pot on there or something. But I went up to it. I saw it. Remember, see, encounter, and undergo. I saw it. I got close to it. I kind of felt the waves of heat. You know when you get close to fire, you feel like? And in my curiosity, I what? Touched. Touched it. And I don't know if you ever played with fire. But when you first light it, you can do that. Right, you know, you do that little. <laughs> well, y'all, put my hand right in it. <laughs> and what I had undergone was the process of being burned. I saw it. I had an encounter with it. And I underwent the process of being burned. And that what? Shaped my experience with fire. I saw 